my Aunt Lucifer, for his highest. People make choices at times that they decide whether they want to go on with God or whether they're content to just be happy with where they're at, with what they're doing, the way that they're doing it. Sometimes we call that stagnation. Some people call it sitting on your laurels or accomplishments. But sometimes it's just a lack of understanding that God cares so much about you that he desires not for you to do more or to accomplish more, but rather that you would learn more about him and that he would have a more intimate relationship with you. So sometimes I think that the reason why people don't grow or mature or keep studying about God is because they've gotten into the religion of God as opposed to the personal knowledge of him or experiencing God in a real and intimate way and setting that you understand that he is real, that he's living inside you, that the more that you discover about him, the more exciting it becomes because you figure out and you discover as you live with God day by day that the foundation of everything that he does, the way that he deals with you is always and has always been based on love. It's never been about some rules or regulations where you have to make yourself become oh so much better and as though God didn't understand that sometimes you have a bad day or you have a failing or you have a, a feature that you don't like and God is at work in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure to cause you to appreciate him in a more intimate and detailed way just like any father would a father desires to see their children grow and when we extend that to our Heavenly Father, we discover that He's so much more than what our earthly fathers were like, and we have no fear of what He desires for us, but that He wants to explain and share with us His purpose and His design of why He made us the way we are. In my utmost for His highest, till you are entirely His, let your endurance be a finished product so that you may be finished and complete with never a defect. James 1.4 Many of us are all right in the main, but there are some domains in which we are slovenly or lazy. It is not a question of sin, but of the remnants of the carnal life which are apt to make us lazy. Laziness is an insult to the Holy Spirit. There should be nothing slovenly or lazy about what we do and how we do it, whether it be in the way we eat or drink or in the way we worship God. Not only must our relationship to God be right, but the external expression of that relationship should be right also. Ultimately, God will let nothing escape. Every detail of our life is under his scrutiny. In numberless ways, God will bring us back to the same point over and over and over again until we learn the detail is what he's discussing and working out in us to reveal to us what he would take from us so that we would be more like him. He never tires of bringing us to the one point until we learn the lesson because he is producing a finished product, our lives and perfection. It may be a question of impulse, and again and again, with the most persistent patience, God brings us back to the one particular point. Or it may be mental wool gathering and our thought process. Or it may be our independent streak, our right to ourselves, our individuality, our freedom to express, our freedom to do what we think we should be able to do, when in reality, our freedom is in restraint. God is trying to impress upon us the one thing that is not entirely right. It may seem right, it may feel right, but until God says it is right, <laughs> it isn't. We have been having a wonderful time over the revelation of God's redemption. Our hearts are perfect toward him. His wonderful work in us makes us know that in the main we are right with him. Now, he says, through St. James, let your endurance be a finished product. Watch the slipshod bits, the parts where we've let 
sin slip in, the lazy parts, the parts we have not disciplined ourselves. Oh, that will do for now. Whatever it is that God is working on you, God will point it out with persistence until we are completely and entirely His and not our own. When we talk about God being a jealous God, most people usually apply that to giving up something because God wants us to be His, but they don't perceive it as being one of desirous love that is pulling us and drawing us toward Himself because it's for our benefit and not for our detriment. Because jealousy that God has is not the jealousy type that causes anxiety or angst or frustration or anger or violence in a relationship, but it's one of saying, I want you because I love you so much that I desire for you to be with me so that where I am, you may be, and that you may be in my presence become like me. And so God works in us to accomplish that purpose and design that he has that we might experience the fullness of what love really is. Because we only taste it in part and we think we have it all, but we don't become satiated, we don't become completely filled up with it and it doesn't overflow out of us to the degree that God would choose to have us become like him that we could love the world so much that we're willing to lay down our life even like Jesus did for the salvation of even just one other person who might hate us, who might despitefully use us, who might be even one of our brethren who would sadly treat us and betray us. When love is put to the test, and we are, how do we react in those kind of situations? The love of God that he desires to shed abroad in our hearts needs to be purified as we turn it over to him, not just that aspect of our life, but every detail and every moment that we live and breathe and move and have our being.